Amen. Amen. All right, let's turn. Uh, I want to uh, uh, look over in Matthew's account, uh, Matthew chapter 6. I mentioned it to you. Uh, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew's account of what we refer to as the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 6. Father, we just ask that you would help us to gra grasp a hold of this truth. Give us a revelation, Lord God, of this pattern that Jesus gave us, Lord, in this short time that we have, Father. Committed into your hands of his name. Amen. 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 All right. Regarding this uh, prayer, I'm going to uh, pick up in verse 5. And Jesus said this, And when you pray, uh, you shall not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you have shut the door, pray to your Father which is in secret, and your Father which sees in secret will reward you openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think uh, that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. And then Jesus said this, after this manner, therefore pray ye. I want to stop right there for a minute before we get into the actual uh, pattern. In the Greek, that statement that Jesus made when he said, when you pray, pray in this manner, uh, in the Greek, it is, the mood is, and I'm not a Greek guy, I'm not trying to impress you with some Greek terminology, because I'm not that, uh, but what I read about this is that the mood is imperative, all right? And what that means, when the mood is imperative, it means it's not a suggestion, it is a command, mm -hmm. all right? Let that sink in. Jesus wasn't suggesting that you pray this way. He was commanding that you pray this way. And there's a reason for it. And the reason why we don't, the reason why we don't use this pattern the way that we should is because we don't understand it. I know Nye has heard me teach on this extensively uh, for many years. Um, <clears throat> But the reason why we don't, uh, we don't use it is because we don't understand it. We just hear it quoted uh, after, you know, whatever, or before a wedding, at a funeral, at a, at a special event, whatever it may be. Uh, and we just quote those words. Jesus never intended, listen to me, Jesus never intended for this prayer pattern for us to just quote those in, in, the, in Matthew's version, version in the King James, 66 words. He never intended for this to be uh, all that we used or all that we did with these 66 words as we just repeat them. He never intended that. What this is, is an outline. All right. It's an outline. It's a pattern of prayer that Jesus intended. All right. Listen, that we take it into our prayer closet or into our prayer lives. I'll just say it this way. When you get a hold of this thing, it'll, it'll be a, become a part of your life. Uh, to bring it into our prayer closet, our prayer lives, and pray it as an outline, all right, as an outline, as a pattern by the Spirit of God, all right? He told us that he, you know, don't pray like the, you know, uh, don't pray like the, you know, like the Pharisees. Don't, don't pray repetitive, legalistic kind of, uh, prayers and just they have no meaning they have no heart just don't don't just say prayers yeah. so I have heard many in certain particular uh, religions denominations that they take this prayer uh, pattern and all they do is just quote the words mm -hmm. quote the words over and over again and that's not what Jesus intended for it to be all right he intended for us by faith to take this pattern into our prayer closet and allow the Holy Spirit to make it real to us and, and allow Him to uh, help us uh, to pray according to the way that Jesus told us to pray. Yeah. We refer to it as the Lord's Prayer. I call it the New Covenant Prayer Pattern. Mm. And what I have found out, I've been praying this way 
uh, for over 35 years, what I have found out in this prayer pattern, this new covenant prayer pattern, is that when you get a hold of this thing and you begin to pray the way that Jesus said to pray, according to the new covenant, we're going to look at it, we won't be able to get detailed, but uh, that, that every, every point in this prayer pattern has new covenant implications. New covenant implications. Meaning this, that when you pray according to this pattern that Jesus gave us, that didn't suggest, but he commanded that we pray this way, what will happen is you will find yourself experiencing and living in the confines and the realm of the new covenant in a greater capacity. Amen. Yeah. What I found when God opened this up to me and began to reveal it to me, and I began to pray this way, all of a sudden, the new covenant benefits, what Jesus wrought on Calvary's cross, became more of a reality and more of an experience in me. In other words, I didn't just preach about it, just talk about new covenant benefit and principle. I found that more and more I was beginning to walk in them. Praise God. Beginning to live in the reality of all of these new covenant benefits, all that Christ wrought for me on Calvary's cross. Every point in this prayer pattern has new covenant implications and new covenant truth that God wants to make a reality in you. Yes. God. Wouldn't it stand the reason of Jesus Christ, the living God, all right? Jesus Christ, the Lord. If he were to give us, a, he gave us a prayer pattern, wouldn't it be consistent with the covenant that he came to ratify? Come on. I mean... <laughs> We're talking about something, if, if, if Jesus stood up right here and said, hey, I want you to do thus and so, and I want you to do it this way, wouldn't it behoove us to do it the way that he said for us to do it? Amen. 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 If we really wanted to be a disciple, if we were a follower of him, well, Jesus in his word is standing up here right now. No, I'm not Jesus, but this is his word. And he's saying to us right now, when a command, when you pray, do it this way. Yeah. And if you don't do it this way, you are missing out on the benefits of the new covenant and missing out on things that God desires to do and wants to do in you and, and in your life and in your family and in your church and in your nation and in the world. You are missing out on it if you don't pray the way that I say to pray. Mm -hmm. See, this prayer pattern, it takes away all selfishness. Mm -hmm. Every bit of selfishness. Every bit of asking amiss. Every bit of asking for things to consume upon our own lusts. It takes that away. Let's look at it just briefly here. I, again, I don't have time. I did a three-hour teaching on it. I wish I meant to bring some CDs and have the whole teaching, but I forgot them. Um, but Jesus said this. He said, when you pray, pray in this manner. Do it this way. After this manner, he said, our Father which art in heaven. That's point number one. Our Father which art in heaven. New covenant truth, new covenant benefit. We have God as our Heavenly Father. Amen. Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been adopted into the family of God. Amen. Amen. You know, you don't see many references, if in maybe one or two in the Old Testament, where God is referred to as a Father. You see it everywhere in the New Testament. Yeah. Especially Jesus referring to God as His Father. But you see it in the New Covenant because... As a result of the blood of Christ, as a result of Calvary, Paul said we can cry out to him. His spirit in, in us cries out, Abba, Father. Amen. Yes. That's a result of the new covenant, a result of the blood of Christ. Think about it. You can call God your Father. Oh, yes. Not only say, well, I know that. Do you really know it? Come on. Do you live your life as if that is a reality and a revelation that you are a son of God? Yeah. 
You are a daughter of the living God with the same rights and the same privileges as His own born son. Pray to think about God. that. Hallelujah. You have been given an inheritance. You are heirs. You, His child, you are heirs with God and joint heirs with His Son. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. So the point is this. This is the number one point. We enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. What we're doing in this first point, we're praising Him and thanking Him that through the blood of Christ that we have Him as our Father. Yes. You say, well, how long, brother, do you pray? How long do you? You can be led by the Spirit. There's time, and I'll take a minute, two minutes. Just, well, Father, I thank you. It's no great, you know, demonstrative thing. It's just I'm grateful. I express it. Yeah. And there have been times when the Holy Spirit begins to minister the reality yeah. of that fact that He is my Father and that I am His Son. I remember one time I fell on the floor. I was just like a, like a puddle. I was all in a ball and just crying out, Father, thank you that you love me yeah. enough and you call me your son. Hallelujah. And you are my Father. I remember one time I shared this when I was preaching Family Worship Center a little bit ago. I shared it many times. I maybe heard it. But one time I was praying and I was in that point. I was just thanking my father for the privilege of, uh, of having this, this type of relationship. And I said this. I made this statement. I said, Father, I said, I am grateful to you for the blood of your son. Mm. Thank you. For because of that blood, I have access to you, yes. my Father. And I'll tell you what, the, the my Heavenly Father spoke to me as clearly as I've ever heard Him speak in my life. He said this, He said, David, I also am grateful for the blood of my Son. For because of that blood, I have access to you. Do you realize that that blood gives you access to Him? And prior to that blood, God did not have access to you as His son and as His daughter. Wow. Let that sink in. Yes. So you're praising Him and you're thanking Him for that reality. Father, thank You. Thank You, Lord. That because of the blood of Your Son that I can call You my Father. Mm. And you see, when you do that every day, there's, there's something that just gets established in you. You yeah. have this confidence that He's your Father and you are His Son and it brings a, an intimacy and a relationship and, and you just you praise Him for that. Yes. Hallelujah. You thank Him for that. New, co new covenant benefit, number one. And then He said this, Hallowed be thy name. You're continuing to praise Him Entering into his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. You're continuing to, to praise him. The word hallowed means to sanctify. It means you are, now you are praising him for what his name affords you. All right? God's name affords you different benefits and different covenant provisions. Yes. There are, his name is the name Jehovah or Yahweh. Uh, it speaks of the covenant God, God who is ready to act on the behalf of his people and ready to save his people. All right. I'm going through this very quickly, so you got to follow me. There are eight compound names given to Jehovah that depict covenant promises and covenant benefits that you have yeah. that you need to know. And it gives you something to praise Him for as a result of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have access to all of these promises, these benefits, and these provisions as a covenant child. Amen. So you're setting His name apart in praise and adoration and worship. Name number one is He is your Jehovah Sidkenu. Meaning that He is your righteousness. Lord, I praise You today that You are my Jehovah Sidkenu. You are my righteousness. See, something happens when you open your mouth and you declare that 
that and you praise him for who he is to you. Yes. I heard someone say once that when you praise him for who he is, he becomes that to you in your experience. So the more that you declare that, the more that you open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you that you are my righteousness. You are my Jehovah's Shepherd. Father, I thank you that because of the blood of Christ, the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross, that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. What a great benefit that that is. Then when the enemy comes to you after you fail, and I didn't say after you fail because you will and you have. Yes, yes. And he says, look at you, you're not righteous. You throw it right in his face. And, oh, he's my Jehovah's Sith. I confess my sin. I'm getting back up on my feet and I'm praising my Jehovah Sith. Oh, yeah. The devil hates for you to get that understanding. He hates for you to get that revelation that righteousness has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the promises, his exceeding great and precious promises and benefits to you as a new covenant believer. Yes. Lord, thank you that you are. Sin is dealt with at Calvary. The penalty of sin has been removed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Name number two. He is your Jehovah Makadesh, meaning your sanctifier. Mm. See, you can't sanctify yourself. That's right. But as a result of faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is your Jehovah Makadesh. Mm. He's your sanctifier. Yes. Lord, I praise you today. Just oh, picture you're in your prayer closet. And you're just praising him. All these oh, names, these benefits, these provisions. Lord, I thank you today that you are my Jehovah Makadash. Yes. Lord, I thank you for your sanctifying grace. I thank you that as a result of the blood of your dear son, that I'm being sanctified holy spirit, soul, and body. Yes. It's a work of your spirit, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, I praise you for that. You say, well, how long, Brother David? Nah, it doesn't matter. You don't put a time on it. That, that may be a truth and a revelation that the Holy Spirit is, begins to minister to you. You might dwell on it for a while. You may praise him for a little longer. So, in, in that, in those two names, all right, in those promises, new covenant benefits, sin is dealt with in every capacity. Sin is dealt with. As a result of what Jesus did on the cross, the penalty of sin is removed in Jehovah said, Canoe, the Lord, your righteousness, and the power and the dominion of sin is broken. Yes. As Jehovah Makadesh, your sanctifier. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. That sin is dealt with that cow. When the devil comes at you and says, you know, sin is. You know, look at what you did, and look at you're never going to change. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, He's my righteousness. He's my sanctifier. Hallelujah. I get back up on my feet, and I keep my eyes Amen. back on Jesus, my faith in the finished work of Calvary. And He's working in me. He's conforming me into the image of Christ. He's doing it despite me. Yes. Because you are my sanctifier. Yes. Glory. Amen. So you're praising Him for His promises. You say, well, man. You know, I have a hard time praying more than 50. You get a hold of this prayer pad and you'll have a hard time doing it all in an hour. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I first got a hold of this, I was literally spending two to two and a half hours going through this pattern as a Holy Spirit would just... And I would get out of my prayer closet and my goodness, man, I felt like, Lord, I can run through a troop and jump over a wall. Oh, a real high wall. <laughs> I was walking in His glory, His presence. And I was just a young Christian. I didn't realize that what God was doing through this prayer pattern was giving me a revelation of the new covenant. Yes. He was giving me a revelation of the cross mm. by praying the way that Jesus said to pray. Mm. All right. Name number three. He is your Jehovah Shalom. This has to do with the Holy Spirit. He's your Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, your peace. Yes. So what does that have to do with the Holy Spirit? Well, as a result of the blood of Christ, you have been reconciled back to God. That's what peace is. Jehovah Shalom means the Lord, our peace. 
You've been reconciled back to God. You've been joined back together with Him. The veil has been rent. Access has been granted. The way has been made into the Holy of Holies, into the very presence of God. You have access to the throne room of God in the mighty name of Jesus by that blood that was shed on Calvary's yes. cross. Praise God. And the Spirit of God as a result of that reconciliation now lives in you. Because of the blood. That's new covenant. Yeah. New covenant. He's your peace. You're Jehovah Shalom. Lord, I praise you today that you are my peace. Yes. I've been joined back together with you. The veil has been rent. Access has been granted. Lord, I'm living in the Holy of Holies. Yes. In the very presence of God. Oh, new covenant benefit. And then he's your Jehovah Shammah. That means uh, God's promise to walk in his presence. It means His overflowing presence, the promise of His presence. It means that God is with you always. Amen. God is here. That's the idea. Jehovah Shammah. God is here. He is for you as the individual believer. He is the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. That's new covenant benefit that you have, my friend. Amen. He's your Jehovah Shama, praise God. The ever-present God, the promise of His presence. You see, this is keep getting gooder and gooder. Yeah. You see, as that, that, and that was just the Holy Spirit. Well, there would be such a witness of the Spirit when you pray this way. And it makes sense because Jesus said, when you pray, do it like this. Amen. The Holy Spirit will be all over it. All right, then He is your Jehovah Rapha. That means soundness, uh, health, and healing. Amen. He is your healer, your Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. By his stripes we are healed. Lord, I thank you today yes. that I'm healed. You know what the greatest healing is for you? Mm. He's healed you of your sin sickness. Come on. And your spiritual leprosy. Amen. You see, God's not always going to heal you physically. Amen. I'm sorry you can call me faithless Amen. if you want, but it's just reality. Yeah. I prayed for hundreds that never got healed in this life. Yeah. I prayed for many that they died of cancer a year later. Yeah. They were, brother, that's not a very good testimony. I thought you would be a man of faith. <laughs> God does not always, he has divine reasons. He has a divine purpose many times for taking someone home that goes beyond us. <laughs> but one thing that he will do <clears throat> all the time, every time, is heal you of your sin sickness yes. and your spiritual leprosy. Yes. And I'm convinced scriptures that we use to claim physical healing, and don't get me wrong, I believe that God does heal physically. I've seen, I've seen it, I've read testimonies, we see it in the Word of God, but I'm convinced that many of these verses has to do with healing us of sin, the effects of sin. Sin sickness, spiritual leprosy. And He will do that every time. That's found in the name Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. All right, then he is Jehovah Jireh. He is the Lord, our provider. Amen. Amen. The greatest thing that he provided was the sacrifice. Yeah. When Abraham and Isaac were going up to that mountain and Abraham uh, was to offer up his son. And at the last minute, the angel of the Lord said, don't harm the lad. Uh, he looked over in that bush and there was a ram in the thicket. That's where the name uh, Jehovah Jireh was given. All right. God will provide a sacrifice. Yes. God will provide. And that carries over into his provision for our lives in every capacity. But the greatest thing that he provided as a result of the new covenant, he provided the Lamb of God, amen, slain from the foundation of the world. Yes. Hallowed be your name, Jehovah Jireh. Yes. As a result of that name, the curse has been broken over our lives. We are no longer under the curse of the law. Amen. No longer under the curse of the broken law. No longer under the curse of failure and insufficiency as a result of the new covenant and what Jesus did providing us the sacrifice. My friends, he's promised us success and prosperity in the kingdom of God. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Yes. Hallowed be your name. That's who you are to me, Lord. Yes. He's your Jehovah Nisi. Mm -hmm. 
The Lord's your banner. That banner means victory. Yes. He's your security, your safety, your victory. Lord, I praise you today that you are my banner of victory. Lord, I thank you that through Christ that I am victorious, yes. that I have security and safety as a child of God. Yes. Hallelujah. The eighth name is Jehovah Rohi. This is probably one of my favorites. That is the Lord our shepherd. Mm -hmm. That name Jehovah Rohi means he leads us to pasture. He's your good shepherd. Yes, amen. He's your great shepherd. Hallelujah. He's your chief shepherd. Lord, I praise you today. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you that you're my shepherd today. Yes. That's the promise that you have for me. That's the new covenant benefit that I have. You're my shepherd. Yeah. You can call, I do this, I'll quote Psalm 3, the Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. That speaks of rest and refreshing and fulfillment. That's what your good shepherd gives yeah. to you. Yeah. Lord, hallowed be your name. You're my Jehovah Rohi. Jesus, you are my good shepherd. Hallelujah. You restore my soul. Yes. You lead me in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. God, when I go through the valley, you're with me. Yes. As my good shepherd, my great shepherd, my chief shepherd. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Everything that we have need of. Yes. God has provided. God has provided. Amen. It's found in His covenant. And the more that we understand these benefits and these provisions, and the more that we praise Him for who He is, it becomes a reality in us. And you'll walk in a confidence Amen. of the new covenant. Yes. The reality and the revelation of the new covenant. So, you say, man, how can I pray for an hour? My goodness, you, <laughs> you, you won't have, you, you'll find, you won't have enough time. Right. You'll have to, you know, get yourself ready to go to work or whatever you do because you won't be able to finish. All right, how would be the name? i got to hurry up. I'm keeping you too long. So that's praise. We're entering the gates with thanksgiving to his courts with praise. He's our Father in heaven. We hallow his name. We spend some time praising him for who he is to us in covenant. And then thy kingdom come. Man, I just don't have time to go through all this. My goodness. Take your time. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the rule, the reign, yes. and the dominion yes. of Christ. Yes. yes. When you are praying, thy kingdom come, what, this is what you're praying, as it applies to us in this dispensation of grace that we live in. What you are praying for is that Jesus would rule and reign yes. and have dominion in your heart. Amen. Pray for yourself. Declare that, Lord, your kingdom. And there'll be a boldness and an authority that actually in the uh, Greek, I can't remember the verb. I believe it's the verb. The idea is you putting your foot down in the spirit. You're making a declaration. Lord, your kingdom come. Yes. Your will be done, O God. Yes. Hallelujah. Not my kingdom, not my will. Amen. Yes, Lord. Not anybody else's will, not anybody else's kingdom. But Lord, you take your rightful place upon the throne of my heart. You reign in my life. Yes. Kingdom. What is the kingdom of God as it pertains to us? Well, we can uh, see it in Scripture in, in Romans 14 and 17. The kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what you're praying for when you pray, Thy kingdom come. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the realm of God's Spirit. That's new covenant living, my friend. 1 Corinthians 4 20 says the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Amen. So you're praying for the power of God to be a reality in your heart and in your life. Lord, your kingdom come. Amen. Your will be done. Praise God. Also, we see that the manifestation of the kingdom of God in this earth is miracles, signs, and wonders. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you're praying for that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Amen. So when Jesus said, pray thy kingdom come, he wasn't talking about the coming kingdom age, and, uh, and at least not completely. I don't really think he was referring to that much at all. Because that's coming whether we pray or not. Right. Amen. So I believe that what he was, what he was uh, when he told us to pray that way, that's what he was wanting us to pray, that he would reign. Yes. 
Amen. Is there a better Amen. prayer if you have children? Listen, if you have children, is there a better prayer to pray for them? Unselfish, totally the will of God, totally what God would want is Jesus reign and rule in the hearts of my children. Yes. That's a pretty good prayer to pray, isn't it? Amen. Lord, your good and perfect will be done in the hearts of my children. There's no better prayer to pray. That's right. I mean, even pray that they be successful and they meet the right guy and whatever, girl or whatever. You pray those things, and that's fine. But if they seek the kingdom of God and they get Jesus reigning in their heart, all of that stuff, my friend, is going to fall into place. Jesus knew what he was talking about when he said, when you pray, do it like this. Yes. Pray that over your family. You can get specific. You can pray for each family member. Declare it over your wife. Declare it over your husband. Declare it with authority uh, over your children. Yeah. And you can, you know, other family members. I found myself praying this way. Lord, I lay claim to everyone in my bloodline. Mm. I lay claim to every family member. Everyone in my bloodline and everyone by law who is in my family. I claim them for the kingdom of God and the will of God to be done in their lives. So you don't have an authority come on you because you're praying the way that Jesus said to pray. There's no better prayer to pray than Jesus you reign in their lives. Amen. Your good and perfect will be done here in earth as you have ordained it in heaven. Lord, do it. Do it, Lord. Pray for yourself. Pray for you. Pray for your church. No greater prayer to pray for your church than the kingdom of God be manifest in this house. That the people in the house, that Jesus would reign upon the throne of their heart. That the kingdom of God in power, in righteousness, peace, and joy would rule in this house. Amen. The manifestation of miracles and signs and wonders would be wrought for. But the greatest thing is that Jesus would reign upon the throne of the heart. That's a great prayer for you to pray for your people, Pastor. Yes. Yeah. Jesus would reign upon the throne of their hearts. Yeah. Thy kingdom come. Lord, your good and perfect will be done in this house. Praise God. You as congregation, pray for your pastor. Pray for the kingdom of God to come. Pray that God would deliver him from unreasonable and wicked men. Those who have another agenda. Jesus, mm. Lord. Pray that for one another. You can pray it over your city, your region, over uh, our nation, over the nations of the world. God, your kingdom come. As yes. much as it can. And this dispensation, I realize that, you know, there is a coming kingdom age. That's the only time that in reality, uh, in fullness, the kingdom of God is going to be revealed and manifest. But God desires to do a great work in this dispensation of grace that we live in. He desires to manifest the reality of His kingdom as much as He can. But listen, it's dependent upon you as disciples of God praying that prayer. Yes. Come, kingdom of God. Be done with God. You say, how long, Brother David? No, you let the Spirit lead you. Yes. And again, man. Amen. I mean, I've, I've, I've gotten going with this, and, and uh, you just almost can't stop. The Holy Spirit was beginning to bring people for you yeah. to pray for. And, yeah. and, uh, and again, there will be an authority that will come over you when you do that. So that's point number three in this outline, mm -hmm. this prayer pattern, new covenant prayer pattern that Jesus gave us. And we begin to ask for... Uh, things for ourselves. Give us this day our daily bread, our daily provision. Literally means uh, daily, the daily, the basic necessities of life. Yeah, it can be an application for spiritual bread. Jesus, the bread of life. You can pray that way too. But it literally is a time for you to pray for, thank God for the basic necessities of life. If you have certain needs, pray, petition Him. He's He's hearing you. You're praying according to His covenant and according to His Amen. will. God, I have a need. I need, I need rent this month. I need some food. I, you know, uh, you know. Basically, in our nation, we we really don't 
we don't know what it is to really be in need of a lot of things. We really yeah. don't. No. There's people in other countries that they have to pray to survive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to have the next meal yeah. for themselves, for their family. But anyhow, it's a time that you pray for your needs. Give us this day. It literally means uh, give us this day in the original language our necessary portion. Mm. And the idea is this. God has a necessary portion for each one of you individually. You know, I don't need a lot of money to run what I do, my household, but someone else who runs a business, who has a larger family or whatever, they might need a greater portion than I do. Right, right. So, you know, God, you're, I just, God, I want what is, what is my portion? Yeah. Was it Proverbs 30 where the writer said something like, you know, don't give me too much where I take your name in vain, uh, but don't give me too little where I have to steal. But Lord, basically what he was saying, give me just enough. Give me my portion. So that's what you're praying for. Give me my necessary portion. And it just, you know, it just, you're expressing your dependence upon the Lord. Even if you're, like I say, most of us, you ain't got to worry about your next meal is coming. Right, right. If you stop serving God tomorrow, you'll probably still be eating. That's just reality. Right, right, right. right. You probably would. But, but you're just expressing to him, Lord, I know that my provision comes from you. Yes. Yes. And uh, you're right. thanking him for that, all right? Give us this day our daily bread. Then we've got forgiveness. All right, I'm going to go quickly here. I know I'm keeping you too long. We've got forgiveness. In the new covenant, we have forgiveness. A time when you, first of all, thank God for his forgiveness, for the blood of Christ, new covenant. Lord, I thank you that I am forgiven of my debt of sin. And as a result of that, Lord, because I've been forgiven, Lord, now give me the grace yes. to forgive everyone who sins against me. Yes. You need grace, folks. Come on. To forgive those who sin against you. And when you have the greater uh, revelation that you have of the forgiveness of God, how much he's forgiven you of your debt of sin, the easier it will be for you to forgive others when they sin against you. Amen. When you realize what a rascal you are and all the <laughs> sin that God has had to forgive you of, Amen. it's much easier when someone offends you, sins against you, no matter how heinous it may be, to say, Father, I forgive them. Yes. Forgive them for this. And so it's a time when you you thank God for his forgiveness, and then you ask the Lord, search me. First of all, search me and show me if there's any sin in my life that I need to confess and receive forgiveness from you. And then, Lord, is there anyone that I need to forgive? Is there anyone that I need to release to you? Yeah. Allowing the Holy Spirit to make that real to you. So you have forgiveness in the new covenant. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Then you have deliverance in the new covenant. Point number six. It's a time when you pray deliverance uh, over yourself, over your family, over your children. Uh, he's your deliverer. Amen. I could, I could go off on this for a long time, but I won't. Uh, but you have that benefit in the new covenant of deliverance. God wants to break chains. God wants to loosen shackles. Yes. Amen. God wants to open prison doors. Amen. You've been set free. You've been delivered through the new covenant, through the blood of Christ. Sin does not have to bind you. Satan does not have to hold you under his feet. That is not the will of God. Amen. He's given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the Amen. evil one. Put on the whole armor of God. Amen. Amen. Stand against the wiles of the devil. The whole armor of God is really Christ and his fullness. You are wrapping yourself in him. So you have deliverance. Praise God. In the new covenant. As the Spirit of God leads you, you pray, pray for your children. Pray deliverance over them. Yes. Amen. Pray deliverance over your church and, and church members that they would experience the liberty and the freedom that there is uh, in Christ because yeah. you have it in the new covenant. Then you end... And I'm, I'm just I'm skipping over so much, but uh, then you end with praise and worship. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. This is the way I do it, Lord. I thank you for your sovereignty. It's your kingdom. Mm. It's your power. It just establishes that assurity in my heart that he is sovereign, that he is in control. Lord, I thank you that you are the Elohim. You are the Adonai. You are the Yahweh. You are the El Shaddai. You are the God of all strength, of all power, of all might. You are my master. You are in control. You are sovereign. It's your kingdom, your power, and your glory. Lord, I thank you that you allow me to be a partaker of it. It's your good pleasure to give me the kingdom, your word says. 
Thank you that you give me the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you change me from glory to glory into that same image, even by the Spirit of God. And you just praise Him for a little while longer. You can even go over again some of those benefits, some of those names, some of those provisions, just as the Lord leads you, and you end in prayer. And I'll tell you what, you do that, my friend. You take an hour or whatever. And you can make this hour. You can do whatever you want with it. You can do it in 20 minutes. You can do it in an hour. You can take a whole day of fasting and prayer and take that pattern and pray through it. Praise God. And I'll tell you, though, when you get done, and you do it by the Spirit of God, not as a ritual, my friend. You will Amen. walk and listen, yes. listen to me. You will walk in the glory and the power and the presence of God in your life in such a substantial manner. I, 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 say, I can't even put into words. I can't even put into words sometimes what I am experiencing and walking in myself. And it's not because of me. It's just that I'm, I'm submitting more and more yes. to what he's given and what yes. he's provided for me. Right. And you're walking, you'll find yourself walking in the presence and the power and the glory of God Almighty. And there ain't nothing greater than that, my friend. Yeah. I've literally, in a sense, felt like the enemy's throwing darts at me. They're actually not darts, they're arrows. But he's throwing darts at me. And they're like hitting the shield of faith. They're hitting yeah. what I'm walking in, Christ. Yeah. Clothed with that armor. It's like that literally in the spirit. I can feel him throwing them at me through temptation and then things in, in my everyday life. And those things are just fizzling out and falling to the Praise ground. God. Walking in the glory of God. Amen. Yes. Lord. Jesus gave us the pattern. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a command. So I am encouraging you to, uh, to submit to what he commanded. And pray the way that Jesus said to pray. He said, brother, I just don't know how to do it. You know what? Just get in your prayer closet and say, God, I really don't understand this. And, don't, and just take each point and slowly yeah. Yeah. just read it and let the yeah. Holy Spirit make it real to you. The little bit that I've given you can kind of give you, some, give you something to start with. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit can reveal things to you through this that, that he hasn't revealed to me. Mm. Amen. Uh, because he's in it. Yeah. And it's the new covenant. And he'll make it real to you. Amen. Amen. Y'all get anything out of it? Praise God. Praise God.